Hi, how are you? My name is Tom Murphy, and we are back with the Tom Murphy Show. We have been on a COVID-enforced hiatus. Uh, the, 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 there seems like there was just so much else going on, and the logistics of uh, doing this uh, were just not truthfully on my front burner. But I think it's time to get back and to uh, you know try and get back to normal as much as we can until vaccines and uh, you know common sense win out the day. So I'm back with the 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 one of the few shows we're doing in 2020, the year of the COVID, and my special guest. We're right at the end of it. For, this is uh, the 30th of December, 2020. And my guest tonight is an old friend of the show and an old friend of myself, uh, county legislative, county, county executive. I almost demoted you there, George. County executive uh, George Latimer. George, always a pleasure, pal. Not a pleasure to be with you. I've had all those titles, so it doesn't matter which one you use. <laughs> uh, George, you know, we've both been kind of, uh, I, 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 would, I would say, uh, preoccupied. Uh, with uh, coronavirus uh, issues and uh, trying to keep our constituents healthy and informed. Tell me how it's been going on the county level. Well, you know, it, we were the first uh, county in this region to uh, see it. Nourishell had the first out positive case and the first outbreak back the first week of March. So we have a unique reality, and not just uh, Nourishell, but uh, all of the sound, in fact, all of Westchester County, we got spotlighted because of circumstance. And um, we really all have been put to the test. And it doesn't really matter whether you're in government or uh, you know, business, if you're in, uh, in the clergy or uh, educator, whatever you are. Uh, we all had to, to go through major changes from when that first case came. The first case came that first week of March, a gentleman from New Rochelle who survived it. But we had one case, then we had 100 cases, then we had 1,000 cases. Yeah. It came on us like a, like a tidal wave. And you know why us compared to any other part of the country? I think Kirkland, Washington had an outbreak in a nursing home before we did, but then, then we were the next biggest thing. But all of us have learned how to adapt and adjust. We all, um, uh, you know, we all learned how to enter the world of Zoom, which I don't, I don't think any of us knew anything about no. on March 1st. You know, now uh, unmute me, please unmute me, or uh, <laughs> when you're put on hold, enter yeah. your passcode followed by pound, you know, so, we're, so that's a new world. The fact that we don't have the same level of personal interaction is a, is a major is a major change for us, and of course, both your personality and mine, the nature of what we do for a living now, and then previously, I was a sales and marketing executive in the private sector, which was all about personal contact. You you meet clients and you uh, you meet people to set up you know the efforts to advance your business. So it, it's an it's an adjustment. You know, I can't go to the Harbor Island Senior Clubhouse uh, on a Tuesday afternoon at two o'clock where you see 10, 12 people sitting playing cards they're not going to be in close quarters. Or for that matter, the VFW hall where the seniors would meet for a nutritious lunch on a regular sure. day. Um, the fireman's parade didn't happen. Well, the, the Thanksgiving parade in, in uh, New Rochelle didn't happen. And the St. Patrick's parade on McLean Avenue didn't happen. All of these things, and I just used a very thumbnail sketch. There were weddings, there were uh, births that, that didn't have the, the normal human connection around it. So we've all had to adapt. In government, what we've tried to do Certainly, ever since uh, Governor Cuomo established his authority within the state, all the governors have uh, to make the basic decisions within my level of government, the county government, as as the town and the, and the village of the cities are. We try to use our authority within our zone to be as helpful as we can. We have the county health department. We try to have the health department work with school districts, with municipal governments uh, to do what we can. We run county parks. We have uh, county beaches and pools. We were able to keep them open at a modified rate. Uh, and we managed to do that without the spread increasing. We closed certain things. Playland Amusement Park did not open in 2020, and I don't know if it's going to open in 2021. Uh, the Kensico Dam Festival was always a lot of fun. We mm -hmm. shut those down, and we shut down fireworks. I know 4th of July, because I've represented the Sound Shore for so many years, I'd go up and down the Sound Shore from Fort Chester to New Rochelle, and you'd see the fireworks from Palmer Island, you'd see them from the Watchmont Yacht Club, you'd see them down at Hudson Park from New Rochelle, up at Playland, nothing. Yeah. None of that. So it's all adjustment. We're trying to do the best we can. And hopefully uh, we get through this, the, um, you know, the vaccines and the light at the end of the tunnel. And then hopefully we get out of the tunnel. Yeah, that, that, that's the, uh, 
right. That, that, that's the, the, the only thing that's keeping us going, I think, is that there is a, uh, a vaccine and uh, hopefully people will continue to use common sense, wearing masks, washing their hands. And we've seen how important that is. George, how is the COVID crisis affecting the county budget? I know it's, it affected the village budget. We had to cut two and a half million dollars out of our original budget uh, requests. And now we have, we're looking at ways to trim another 800,000. So uh, we're doing that on a micro uh, level. I'm sure you're, you're doing something the same on a micro, a macro level. Well, probably the single biggest impact that it had on us is we started the year, the budget year, calendar year 2020 uh, in great shape. We had revenue from sales tax uh, that was going to help us reestablish our fiscal policies. We weren't going to borrow to pay for uh, certiorari payments, repayments on uh, commercial uh, tax uh, reductions. Uh, we weren't going to have to borrow to pay for pension costs, which had been the, the practice in the prior years to my coming on board. Uh, we're going to be able to add money to our reserve fund. We're going to get our bond rating back up to AAA bond rating, and then poof. We had to reverse a host of different uh, what would be otherwise good fiscal policies because we, we needed the money to offset the loss of sales tax. At the county level, the property tax uh, level of resources stayed, stayed on, on target. But the sales tax, hotel occupancy tax, which is a much smaller revenue stream, and there are other revenue streams like this, mm -hmm. were greatly affected by the change in um, behaviors. We shut down you know, the, the, the society for the better part of a month and a half, and then slowly reopened parts of it. We never fully got back to full scope. And so we had a big loss in sales tax, probably in the vicinity of 100 million. <clears throat> we did a number of different things to close the gap. And as we go into the new year budgeted with the budget, we were able to actually cut property taxes at the county level for the second straight year. But it depends on certain things happening out there as well. We don't know the, what, what the state's gonna to do to balance their budget. Their budget is in worse shape than yours and ours. And uh, they may make arbitrary decisions to throw more costs down to the village, the town and the county, which yeah. is unanticipated. So we may yet have mid-year budget issues for our respective governments. The, the two biggest things we did though, we did a voluntary separation uh, program where we incentivize people who are long-term employees to, um, uh, to complete their time with the county government, we gave them a payout, which made it worth their while to do that. And then we were able to run the position empty and save money. That's probably about a $10 million positive effort, uh, effect on the county budget. And even more important than that was in the very first COVID CARES bill that passed the federal government, they set aside a certain amount of money for counties, 500,000 people or more. They allocated a certain amount of money to us. We received uh, $168 million only to be used for COVID related costs. But that helped us with all the overtime in the county yep. health department, helped us with the overtime for the county police. Big, big issue. You have a, um, you know, a police officer who's out for COVID uh, sure. and then has to quarantine and you got to fill those hours that that officer would have yep. been on duty. And that's, over. Of shifts. that's more expensive. And we have the same thing with the prison because we run a county prison as well as a county jail, as well as a, a police force. So, uh, when you go down the line, our emergency services department, all the PPE and the guys working overtime to do that. So we had a number of expenses and costs that could be picked up under uh, the uh, the CARES Act, COVID CARES Act, CARES being an acronym. So that helped us, Tom. That gave us the ability not to have to now go into our budget and have to raise property taxes, which is really the only source of revenue that we control. Every other revenue is controlled by the state as to whether we use it or not. So we were fortunate. The other big counties of New York State uh, did different things with the money, but we think we used it wisely. And if I can just add one other thing, with some of this additional money, we use money that we set aside for uh, helping people with food insecurity. We were able to support the various food pantries like the Larchmont Romantic Food Pantry that's at uh, Columbus Park every Tuesday <clears throat> and other ones around the county feeding Westchester. We were able to spend money to help small businesses with a grant program uh, and, you know, there are a number of organizations benefited from it. The, the large one of the Mammatic Chambers of Commerce were two of <clears throat> the organizations that were eligible and applied. And uh, then we're also to help uh, with eviction prevention. So, you know, it, it's a one-shot deal to deal with a one-shot problem. We're hopeful that before 21 is over, we'll have pulled out of this again, you know, sort of like an airplane going down the road where you start mm -hmm. to back on, it takes off. Um, once people feel more safe than they do today, they'll go back out in social settings. They'll go back out and shop a bit more. They'll go back out to restaurants a bit more and we'll see the economy turn around. So what was a what was the federal benefit? And perhaps there'll be some additional money coming this year 
that'll help us get through this. Back to normal, then the county can function without subsidies and, and do the job we're supposed to do. Yeah, I, I, thank you for that. I, I, one of the things uh, I, wanna, I wanna hit on food insecurity, uh, because one of the things when, when this happened uh, in the village of Mamaronek, I knew, you know, the village of Mamaronek being a very diverse place. So we have, uh, you know, the top 0.10% of wealth and people who are living way below the poverty line. Uh, and that's part of our strength, but it's also, you know, the reason we have to look out for each other. And when this all happened, one of my goals for the village of Mamaronek, which I'm very proud to say this community has realized, is that no child in the village of Mamaronek would go to bed hungry. And through the work of, as you pointed out, uh, Lodgemont and Marinette Hunger Task Force and the uh, Coalition for Communities, I believe that that's happened. And, uh, that, and thank you for your help. I know the county had supplied us with uh, a lot of hand cleaner to give out, a lot of masks to give out, right. and it's been a real success. <clears throat> How's the rest of the county doing on food insecurity? Well, I think that, that you pointed out the, the experience is, is everywhere. It's exploded in terms of the number of people who can't um, <clears throat> can't be sure that they can put food on the table uh, on a regular basis. And, and just to be clear about it, there's always a certain percentage of individuals who are poor, living at a certain level of poverty or below. Those numbers got much higher this year because of people who were primarily hourly workers and lost their <laughs> hourly wages. Now, some people, you know, they have unemployment and the unemployment was, you know, sufficient depending on the number of mouths they had to feed. But for some, it was not. And of course, they're going through that now since the federal uh, problems with this new plan just got passed and all the, the turmoil around it. But um, we saw a tremendous jump countywide everywhere. And what was interesting is it wasn't just in the places you'd expect. It. Our urban poor centers, you know, Mount Vernon, and parts of Yonkers, Port Chester fits that model and parts of New Rochelle, White Plains, Peekskill, so forth. But now we were seeing in upscale communities, people needing to come to, um, uh, you know, food um, uh, pantries to get enough food for them to, you know, live on for the period of time. And it was uh, a little dis disconcerting to see how large a group that was. And uh, I think that until the economy is fully righted itself, there's going to be more people in that situation. There's going to be more people who can't pay their rent. And while there's an, a, a moratorium on evictions, once that moratorium is lifted, yeah. it's going to be just, you know, a flood of potential evictions of people who couldn't pay their rent during this period of time. And the landlords, and many of them are small business owners themselves. They have a house they rent to a couple of tenants and they can't evict them now, but they need the rent in order to pay their mortgage payments and their fuel costs and the things that they have to do. So um, all of this is uh, you know, really how you look at this from a societal standpoint. I think probably the biggest thing that was disappointing in all of this is that it was not a national strategy from the beginning because this was a national problem. This was not a Westchester problem, a Maronic Village right. problem, or a New York State problem. It wasn't a California problem. It was a United States of America problem. And uh, you know, you wouldn't look at the depression and say, well, this is a depression for Ohio. What's Ohio gonna do? This is a depression for Mississippi. What's Mississippi gonna do? You'd say, this is a national crisis. And these are the steps we're gonna take. And, and if there ever was a time we needed to be bipartisan, this would be it. And yes. you'd have people that would say, okay, I know we disagree on so many things in public policy, but right now we have the potential of people dying. You know, X hundred thousand have died nationwide. We've lost 1,650 people here in Westchester County. And here's our national strategy. And then the George Latimer's, the Tom Murphy's, the Nancy Sellickson's, the Gary Zuckerman's of the world who run smaller governments. Here's what your role is as, as we go forward in order to help us administer this. And without a national strategy, we all kind of did our own thing. There's the governor, uh, Governor Cuomo did his his uh, directions and we follow under that. And then we sort of freelance it. We figured out, can we get some money for small businesses? Yes. I don't know. What do you think? Um, you know, American ingenuity, as always. You don't sit yeah. around saying, oh my God, what are we going to do? You do something. And you hopefully you do what's intelligent. And if you make a mistake, you admit it, and you fix it. You don't sit there and double down on stupidity. Nobody does that. Except right. when you're so hung up on, you know, public <clears throat> industry that it uh, it becomes your way of operating. You know, I, I found so disconcerting when this, uh, especially in the beginning, because in the beginning, you know, the uh, disease was affecting New York, was affecting New England, it was affecting California. And you saw the president talking about, you know, it's the blue states. The blue states are having this problem. You know, and so it, it turned us from being Americans into being 
you know, the blue states as, as if we weren't part of the country. And, uh, you know, I, I would never want to replicate that uh, from any other president in the future. But I, I think that that was a very disappointing way of looking at, as you pointed out so cogently, a problem that was national, it was worldwide, but had to be dealt with in America, in America, you know, with a national plan. And there wasn't a national plan. And, uh, you know, we often get ahead. criticized, those of us who've been in government for any length of time, because we're, quote, unquote, politicians. And what we need to have is somebody who's not a politician, somebody who comes from outside of your yeah. political world to do things. So here's what happens. When you've been in office, as I have, over a number of years in a number of different positions. So I don't carry Harrison. Harrison is a generally Republican community, and I generally lose Harrison. But because I've been around for a while, you still have friends in government, Republicans, I'm a Democrat, in government, and you still work together. You don't write off Harrison because Harrison's yeah. Republican and you're a Democrat. And the people who've been around for 10 years, 15, 20 years, whatever, we take the attitude of, okay, we're all brothers and sisters. When election day comes, I hope to carry Romaritic. I hope to carry Porchester. I don't think I'll carry Harrison, but it doesn't matter. Do, do your job. You get somebody who's never been in politics before. And, and so he looks at the world as you're with me, or you're against me. Yeah. When you've been around for a while, you realize, and you run for office, 40% of the people aren't going to vote for you, no matter how good you are. And you, you forget about that. You just say, let me do what I think is the right thing. If I do the right thing, I'll be okay the next time I go before the ballot. But a person who doesn't have that experience, you haven't been through the wars like you and I have. You know, you've run at, 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 uh, at the village level, you've run at the town level, you ran a primary at the county level, you've won and you've lost, and, and you know what it's about now. And I know what it's about now. And it's about, at the end of the day, it's about cooperation. It's about mutual respect. You can disagree with somebody, and yeah. maybe you have a beer and you argue about it some more. But the bottom line is when it comes time to do the job, you stop that stuff and you yeah. just figure out how to cooperate and work together. And at the end of the day, no one truthfully is really going to remember who your county executive was during these years. Nobody's really going to remember. We put the name of Ed McCallion on the office building uh, 40 years, 50 years after Ed was uh, county executive. Nobody knows who he is. It doesn't matter. He was a great county executive and he was a Republican. But that's just it. Just do your job while you can. Yeah. And that's what I think we're all trying to do right now. Yeah, I think what we, yeah, and I think we share the same philosophy is that after the election, you know, you, you deal with people on a human level, right. you know, on a one-on-one -on -one and human level. You know, it, it, listen, nobody agrees with me 100%. And I have found out that some of the things I thought were true five years ago aren't true now. So I don't even agree with myself 100%. Right. You know what I mean? But you, you got to be a grown-up about this. You do. Yep. But anyway, so we move forward. And as we head to the new year with the vaccine coming up, Tom, uh, the governor uh, is laying out a game plan for vaccine distribution. He's working through uh, a hub hospital in each of the different regions of the state. In our area, that's the Westchester Medical Center, the tertiary care facility over on the Valhalla campus. It is not run by county government as it once was. It's an independent hospital. And they're laying out a game plan to help uh, get the vaccines out there. If we can get these vaccines out there as appropriate by the end of the spring and most people can get vaccinated, then we're gonna to start to pull out of this. Yep. And, and then we can talk about these things when we're old men uh, or, or we can read about it in the history books, but, but we can get past it for right now. And that's why- well, I, I, think, I think what we have to try and do too is look at, you know, I, I think we all did the best we can with the information that was in front of us. But, you know, I, I think in situations like this, what you wanna to do too is do an after action report kind of, you yeah. know, like, what could we do better next time? Because I would like, you know, there to be kind of a manual in Village Hall for the, the next situation like this, where a mayor 20 years from now would say, all right, we're having this problem. They, 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 they wrote up a protocol. Let's see what they, they say we should do first. You know what I mean? And so, so because, oh, yeah, because this might not be the last pandemic. We had no ability to call on somebody and say, uh, one of my predecessors, hey, when you went through this in 1978, what did you guys do? Because we haven't seen this in a hundred years and everything right. different. I would say one thing, because I know you want to touch on other issues. The the the, the one thing I'd, I'd like to think that I've tried to do in this job, because you've known me in other positions, county legislator, state assembly, and state senator. So as a county executive, I've tried not to take the response, the job that my corporate interest is just the county government alone. And as long as my county government, which I'm directly responsible for, is solvent, 
that everything else is like not my problem. I've, I've taken the attitude as I've always had, and you've always had, that I'm going to work with village governments, I'm going to work with town governments, and we're going to be partners. We're like brothers in a family. The county is like the biggest brother because we're a local government, but we're bigger. We have other responsibilities, but we're all siblings. You know, I'm not dad. I'm your I'm your older brother. And you, and as you know, you have a bigger family than I grew up in. Uh, the older brothers take care of the little brothers, and we and, and we work together. And and the village of Mamanic has a certain amount of resources. The village of Larchmont is smaller, has less resources, but we're all in it together. And I hope to I'd like to think that what we've done at the county during COVID is we've taken that attitude and we've said, okay, Lorraine Walsh, Tom, uh, Tom Murphy, uh, Nancy Seligson, Ronnie Belmont and Harrison, and Josh Cohn and Rye, Noam Bramson, we're in this together. Let's figure it out. Yep. Thank you. And, and you were, the, the leadership from the county has been excellent. Uh, I, I can't thank you enough. Um, just quickly, uh, let's just hit on evictions because I know the state has passed a law uh, that delays eviction uh, proceedings for a few months. I think I think the federal uh, government uh, also had something in the, the latest COVID relief bill. Uh, but as you touched upon, I mean, a lot of, especially in Mamaroneck, there's a lot of uh, landlords who, you know, aren't big corporate landlords. There's somebody that has a two family, there's somebody that right. has a three family house, and that's their kind of source of retirement income or something. And it, it's a hard situation because you know those landlords need the money. Right. Because they're not Rockefeller here, you know, and and but, you know, how do you get how do you get blood out of a stone? I, I think that there has to be some, you know, uh, mediation in the future, like saying, all right, you know, they owe you six months rent, but you know, they're never going to have that. You know what I mean? So maybe we'll get three months and we'll work forward, and we'll, you know, so I think that there has to be a way to, uh, you know, negotiate these things, you know, because you're going to throw people out and who are you going to get in there? Everybody's in the same situation. We're all in the same boat. Right. It's going to take a high level of government uh, to, to work on a broader basis than we can within our jurisdictions. Uh, but the bottom line is this, you've had, um, you, you've had a, a, a fall off in the economy of the country. People stopped working because they can't pay their bills. The people who would take the money from their bills and run their businesses can't make their bill payments and everybody's in the same boat. There are certain, you know, industries or experiences where people haven't faced this, but by and large, we're in the same boat. So when the when the eviction moratorium is lifted, the county government's responsibility, working through social services, is to be able to have a certain amount of federal resources, which we're given, to provide back rent to try to resolve it. As long as the as long as the individual can pay going forward, then you can you can pay a certain amount of back rent, and uh, and then in addition to that, where there are where there are landlords. Who are facing this kind of situation? We 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 have resources that can say to the landlord, "Listen, we'll give you X number of dollars. It's not the total amount that you're due, but if you right. take X amount of dollars, work through change change the the monthly rate, spread it out over time, and then and this is beyond this is the part that's beyond us. Then we need New York State, which regulates banks, to be able to go to some of the financial institutions and say you need to restructure mortgage loans and take right. into account the fact that this person who borrowed this money is just as true." For commercial real estate as it is for residential real estate, uh, that they need to have a longer payback time. Every so often, you know, you'll see a situation where you argue over a year or two of uh, mortgage payments and they restructure the, the deal and they stretch out. The they add yeah. a couple of years to the end of the deal so that it comes to the same amount of money and then you sort of catch your breath and then you can, you can handle it and negotiate and pay it. But this is, again, where federal government steps in. This is where federal government says we need a nationwide solution to this. I don't know what the Biden administration will do. I hope they do things along these lines. Uh, we'll see what they do. And the state has a role to play. And I know the governor is yeah. being very aggressive in these things. If those positions can be put into place, we can soften the blow to some extent. There's always the bad tenant who's looking for a way to cheat the system. There's always the, the unscrupulous landlord who's trying to beat the system. And the vast majority of tenants and landlords are caught up in something bigger than them. Right. And that bigger than them is something where the federal government, the state government has to say, we're going to shut the economy down or the exactly. deaths are going to run rampant. And oh, so therefore, we shut, the, we shut down the society. We shut down the economics. So now we're going to make you whole. Yes, we're going to borrow money for the future. But, you know, we just added a trillion dollars in debt a couple of years ago to give tax cuts to people in upper brackets and corporations. Two trillion. Two so, trillion. so two trillion. So if you're worried about your debt and how you're going to pay it over time, you can certainly worry about it. 
because yeah. they're individuals that are renting houses, uh, renting apartments and houses, and landlords who have five or four or five apartments and and they can't make exactly. it, you know, help finance that that reality too. Uh, we're getting down near the end, George. I want we're coming up to 2021, which is an odd number of year. Uh, in odd numbered years, uh, I have to run for election. You have to run for re-election this year. Um, I'm hoping that you're going to run for re-election this year, George. Well, I'll tell you my secrets if you promise me to tell you your. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I have very few secrets in the village of America. <laughs> my uh, my intent is, uh, as we're speaking now at the end of December, within about two weeks, I'm going to formally announce that I am seeking a second term as county executive. Mine is a four-year term. And I've had one four-year term. It will be at the end of the coming year. I've served three years so far. Um, I put in a bill this year, which was passed by the legislature, to limit county executives to two four-year terms. So Westchester County has the toughest term limits on county executives anywhere in the state. And I advanced the bill, and the legislature agreed and passed it. So no one can say, oh, you exempted yourself. I, I personally think, uh, as the TV show once said, at my level of government, eight is enough. And uh, you know, if I have the chance to have a second four years, I'm going to try to pick up things that I had to push aside because of COVID. Um, and uh, you know, we certainly have tried our best to fix things that that we thought needed to be fixed. Um, things like the Spring Ridge pools down in Yonkers, the Miller House, Washington headquarters in North Castle, mm -hmm. North County trailways, bike trailways that goes through the western northern part of the county. And um, we're, we're going to be opening a new New Rochelle family court right down the road uh, in the heart of New Rochelle. That's something promised that we intend to deliver Ditto Memorial Field in Mount Vernon. So we've got a lot of things to do. Uh, the fact that we've been able to cut property taxes the last two years, we think is a good step in the right direction. I can't promise you're gonna cut it every year. It depends on what happens in the society. But all of that, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go before the electorate this year and uh, <clears throat> make my case, ask for a second and final term. And, uh, and that's what I'm planning to do. Now, Tom, tell me your secrets. What are you gonna do in 2021? Uh, George, uh, my, my intention right now, the good Lord willing and a quick creek don't rise, is to uh, run for re-election in 2021. It will be my running for my third two-year term. Uh, like you, I think Mamaronek has made a lot of progress in the last few years. Uh, I think uh, you know, it, it has been a pleasure and, and a privilege to be mayor of the village of Mamaronek. Uh, you know, it, it's a it's an interesting community. It is a complicated community, but I, I really do appreciate the challenge. I mean, I was a town councilman, uh, as you know, for almost four years, and I, I love the town of Mamaroneck and I love the people I worked with uh, at the town of Mamaroneck, but it didn't offer the challenges that the village of Mamaroneck offers. And uh, I think we've, we've you know, turned back uh, the tide on uh, overdevelopment. You know, we've uh, made this a more, uh, accepting community. We've made this a more welcoming community for immigrants. Uh, you know, we, we've tried to be supportive of uh, progressive ideals. We're the only village uh, in Westchester County that has a Black Lives Matter memorial. Uh, you know, that, that was not an easy task to get done, but we got it done. And, uh, you know, it's a testament to who we are as a community. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, th I think that we are bored and I tried to be reflective of how the community is, where the community wants to go. And, you know, I'm, I'm willing to put my name out there and, you know, let, let the voters make their choice and uh, live with the outcome. Yeah, and you know, you know how that works. You know, it's just, yep. it's, up to not our first, it's not our first time at the rodeo. <laughs> no. So but I do think I look, forward, the I look day, forward to running with you. Well, I, I look forward to the time out there too. I think at the end of the day, people will decide uh, what they like, and they'll make their decision. Yep. I'll live with it either way. I'm, get, I'm getting a, a wrap up here from uh, our director, Dina Schumacher, uh, who I want to thank for facilitating this tonight. George, always a pleasure. Happy New Year to you and your family, and Happy New Year to everybody watching out in LMC TV land. We will see you all in 2021.